So post fight review for Ganega Lopez versus Ken Shiro. And Ken Shiro managed to successfully dethrone Ganega Lopez and become the new WBC light flyweight champion of the world. Um, a very good fight, very close fight actually. Uh, Shiro wound up winning by a majority decision. One judge had at 114-114, all even. The other two judges had at 115-113 to for Shiro. Um, personally, though, I actually had it 115-113 to for Ganega Lopez. But that's not to say that uh, the wrong, wrong man necessarily won the fight. Um, I think this was a really even fight pretty much from bell to bell, from the first round all the way to the 12th. Really close even fight, a lot of swing rounds. I'd say about like seven or eight rounds, really, you could pretty much give to either fighter uh, depending on exactly what you saw as being a little bit more effective really really even exchanges uh, throughout much of this fight it's really interesting because um, when, back during the live broadcast the live Fuji TV broadcast they actually only showed the very last round of this fight because of the fact that this fight actually came on before the live broadcast started so they they started off with the um, Juan Chiritos Hernandez versus Dago Higa fight then they showed the twelfth round of this fight between Lopez and Shiro, as well as you know the the announcement of the decision before they went on into the uh, Rio de Mirada versus Hassan and Dom fight. Uh, but this fight was actually really entertaining, a really um, brilliant, just kind of a technical show showcase between these two fighters. I mean, you had the veteran Ganega Lopez, thirty five years old. Um, he's been a world champion for a little while now. Um, Ken Shiro, the the younger fighter, uh, twenty five years old. Uh, now advances to 10 and 0 with five knockouts. Lo Lopez um, drops to 28 and 7 with 17 knockouts. Uh, but yeah, really a, just an impressive uh, performance from both fighters. Really overall, um, starting out, I thought Lopez uh, kind of uh, started off on the right track, looking to I think kind of assert himself as the champion. Um, had slightly better timing than uh, than Shiro. Looked like Shiro, you know, as the the young fighter trying to get in there, and do some things, work some things out. Um, the first one was even fairly even uh, unto itself. I think that Lopez uh, did the slightly cleaner work though, and I think that he threw more and landed more on uh, on Shiro. Um, from the second round towards the fourth round though, I thought Shiro got into a really good rhythm was sticking and moving really well, was measuring out the right hand really well, and also um, getting his left foot on the outside of uh, Lopez's right foot. Lopez is a southpaw boxer, and Shiro is an orthodox boxer. And I thought he was doing really good at kind of doing a bit of a stick and remove routine and kind of keeping it to one or two shots at a time. Whereas it seemed like Lopez had more of an advantage throughout the fight when he was able to kind of ratchet off combinations in three, fours, and fives. Uh, when it tended to be one or two shots at a time, it seemed like Shiro had the advantage when it was more than that. And Lopez was able to kind of um, throw his first couple of shots from the outside and then throw that three, fours, and fives on the inside is where it seemed like he had the advantage because those short chopping shots in the inside, I think he was shortened up a lot better than Shiro's were. Um, it seems like Shiro definitely needed a little bit more extension on the shots in order to have an advantage. Um, but like, as I said, I mean, I thought Shiro uh, controlled for the most part the rounds two, three, and four. Round five, it seemed like Lopez finally uh, managed to kind of get back into the groove of things after the fourth round, I think, was the most clear-cut round for Shiro. Um, round five, as I said, uh, Lopez started to get back into a different kind of rhythm, actually. He started holding his gloves a little bit higher, used a lot more um, like head and torso movement, a lot more like movement with the shoulders, almost like a, like a southpaw version of a Juan Manuel Marquez in the, in the way that he was kind of do, doing a little bit of the side-to-side -side with that high guard. And he did really well doing that. He's shooting short shots, uh, shots up the middle, the one two and then as I said before I mean he would follow almost like with the three four and five especially to the body a lot of those body shots it seemed like were kind of putting Shiro on edge a little bit like keeping him a, li a little bit more hesitant to throw or throw as not not even just as throw as frequently but throw as um, with as much snap as he had been doing through round two three and four um, I thought that Lopez incidentally kind of controlled round five six and seven with uh, that type of rhythm, although six and seven, I thought were a little bit more toss up, um, somewhat in the same way that two, three, two and three were. Even though I thought uh, Lopez edged six and seven in a similar fashion to the way that I thought that Shiro managed to edge two and three. Uh, round eight, I thought Shiro managed to uh, kind of come back and win that one um, once again with uh, just kind of a good stick and move routine. Um, keeping it to one or two shots at a time as opposed to Lopez, you know, kind of stalking and not necessarily having 
um, the, the, the hand speed uh, that, uh, that Shiro had. And I think Shiro was kind of basically leading. And uh, I think that Lopez wasn't quite able to counter um, Shiro quite as successfully. It seemed like Shiro kind of cut a second win had, um, it was, and his hand speed was definitely uh, cutting it really, really nicely. Um, the ninth round, I thought was another pretty close round. Um, I wound up edging it to Shiro. I thought that um, he was able to control the distance a little bit more effectively, um, land slightly cleaner shots. Um, a couple of good body shots from Shiro as well. Um, you know, good, solid body work from Lopez as well, but I thought just like the, the cleaner, more snappy shots were landing from, Lope, from uh, Shiro. Um, the 10th and 11th and 12th round, actually, though, I wound up actually giving all three of those rounds to Lopez. I could see uh, one or two going to uh, Shiro as well, which is, I think, why, a big part of why the judges wound up having it um, for Shiro in the end, or two of the judges at least. Um, but I thought that Lopez uh, controlled the championship rounds, and to me, I thought that he deserved to uh, be able to hold his title. At the very least, you know, by, a, if anything, like a draw, you know, and, and be able to retain his title. Um, I thought, uh, especially in the 11th and the 12th round, Lopez really tried to gut it out and really tried to press the action, really force the action upon Shiro. And basically, in a, it seemed like you know a last-ditch attempt in order to like really salvage and, and be able to save his title um, by by draw or by close decision. And basically, he just went right at uh, Shiro um, with a lot of punches, punches and bunches. And I thought he outfought Shiro. I thought he landed um, cleaner shots uh, on the inside, especially. Um, and Shiro was able to, and I thought that just like, you know, when he was able to make it a bit more of like a brawl, like a rough and tumble inside fight, that Lopez definitely held the advantage um, throughout the fight, but especially in the 11th and the 12th round. And so I scored those uh, two Lopez. So in the end, I, as I mentioned before, I had a 115 to 113 uh, for Ganagan Lopez. But that's not to say that I don't think uh, that Ken Shiro deserved, um, you know, to, to win the fight necessarily either. You know, I thought Shiro did a damn fine job. Um, personally, I'd definitely love to see a rematch between these two. You know, I'd be, I'd be, um, I'd be very anxious to see a rematch between these two. I mean, this I think was probably one of the the more technically brilliant fights of the year, just in terms of the fact, that, you know, they they were both kind of switching things up in there, both um, switching up the timing of their styles, you know, uh, moving around uh, really well, good foot movement from both, good uh, hand speed and timing from both, and you know, I thought they both uh, did really well. Um, especially Shiro, considering the fact that this was, you know, a fairly uh, good step up for him um, from his previous opposition. You know, stepping up to a uh, to uh, really a world championship level, elite level opponent. You know, and especially an opponent that that has um, experience as Lopez is in all these years that he's had in boxing. Um, there is the possibility, however, that uh, Pedro Gavada, um, Lopez's uh, is rival the last couple of years, may wind up actually getting the shot at the WBC title first, however, because uh, Gavada was actually in line to fight Lopez this past year. He wound up actually pulling out the last minute because he wound up uh, injuring himself. I think it was uh, he had a hand injury, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's entirely possible that Gavada could fight um, Shiro coming up next. And I actually think that's a pretty solid fight as well. Um, Going into a potential rematch between Guevara and Lopez, I was slightly favoring Guevara to duplicate their first fight in, in Guevara winning. Because, you know, of course, Guevara defeated Lopez as the champion, uh, wound up losing to um, Yu Kimura and then, uh, in a close fight against uh, Kimura, which I thought Guevara actually deserved to win. And then Lopez went over and, um, you know, pre fairly uh, clearly defeated uh, Kimura. Um, and of course, now there's a possibility that Guevara may kind of do this to the the same thing to Lopez, what Lopez did to him, and with regards to beating the man that beat him, it'd be uh, pretty funny if that wound up turning out to happen. And I would slightly favor Guevara to actually defeat uh, Kinshiro. He has a fairly similar style to Shiro, but I think he's just overall a, a tad bit sharper and uh, just better experienced overall. Um, that said, though, I think uh, Ken Shiro did put on an excellent performance, and I wouldn't necessarily count him out, you know, even if he was to fight the, the likes of the, the other champions. Interesting now, because uh, at the very least, as of right now, um, it may change tomorrow, but as of right now, all four of the world champions at 108 pounds are now from Japan. You have uh, Ken Shiro holding the WBC, Hiroshi Taguchi holding the WBA, um, Akira Yagashi holding the IBF, and Kosei Tanaka holding the WBO. Um, I would favor Tanaka over Shiro most definitely, but I think Shiro stands a really solid chance against the likes of Yagashi or Taguchi. But it's looking like uh, Tanaka is probably going to be fighting Taguchi next, so um, it's uh, looking like that wouldn't necessarily be likely. Um, as I mentioned before, I think uh, the most likely next opponent for um, 
for Shiro would probably be Pedro Guevara unless he's able to get, uh, you know, like an optional defense before then. Then, you know, he may fight like uh, uh, Randy Petokorin or Hecky Butler, you know, the former 105-pound uh, champ or, you know, some, somebody of that, of that nature. And, uh, you know, I, I'd favor him to come through against uh, most anybody um, in the WBC rankings. Carlos uh, Canazales, interestingly enough, is actually ranked in the, the top uh, 15 in WBC. He's ranked at number 10, as I'm looking at here right now. Um, which I think would be a solid test for him. You know, I thought Kanazales um, almost deserved to beat Ryoichi Daguchi this past uh, New Year, so I think he'd, he'd be definitely be a, a solid shout um, for a potential uh, upset out there. Uh, but, you know, him versus Guevara, him versus Kanazales, um, him versus uh, Jonathan Takoning even would be a, a fairly solid fight. Um, but, you know, I definitely think that he, he has proven himself amongst the top of the ranks at 108 pounds. Um, to me, I, I thought Lopez deserved to be the number one fighter at their weight uh, up until this fight. And now, really, I'd probably only have uh, Tanaka clearly ahead of uh, Ken Shiro. Although I'd say that Taguchi maybe deserves to be placed just slightly above him as well, simply because of the fact that um, I think Taguchi is just a little bit more proven just overall on the elite level. But um, solid performance from Shiro. Uh, tough break for Ganagan Lopez, who to me is still definitely one of the best fighters at 108 pounds, um, absolutely, and just really one of the best fighters in the weight range as a whole. Really, really solidly skilled fighter. Um, just kind of uh, wasn't able to come away with it, unfortunately, this time. But I'm sure he'll get another shot at some point in the future. Um, he is on, on the older side, however, you know, 35 years old. Uh, but I, I don't think he's showing any signs of slowing down, really. He's uh, still a very uh, good boxer, you know, just uh, really well experienced, well skilled. And um, I'm sure he'll get a shot at some point in the future. But um, props to Kinshiro for the victory. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.